Hi, this is Malachi. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm the pastor and founder of Life's Word Ministry and executive producer of Today's Man with Pastor Malachi, along with my beautiful wife, Christine. Today's Man addresses everyday issues, problems, and successes through a biblical perspective for real everyday people just like you. This is not just about the man, but for mankind as a whole. Listen in to today's podcast as I share thoughts about today's man. Welcome to another show. I am your host, Pastor Malachi. Let's get in it. Let's get on it and let's get to it. Tonight, I want to talk about making marriage last. What's the key? Many of you that are married. I commend you for staying married as long as you have. What's the key to your happiness? What's the key to your marriage lasting as long as it has? Today's man, we want to address making marriage last. We as men, whether they want to admit it or not, we need a lot of help in our marriage. Men, let me talk to you. What can we do along with our wives to ensure that our marriage will last a long time? That's a good question. That's something that we need to ponder and try to figure out. A key principle that should be enforced before the marriage begins and is the first most important issue is one of obedience to God and his word. This is vital for you that are single to have obedience to God's word before the marriage begins. God asked over in uh, Amos 3.3, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? You have to agree in the direction that you're going. The person that you are hooking up with, the person that you marry, did you guys agree on the direction that you wanted to go? I hope so. For the born-again believer, this means not beginning a close relationship with anyone who is not a believer. That's key as well. 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. We all have heard that over our lifetime if you've been in church any amount of time. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? They don't have anything in common. Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? They don't have any fellowship. You go into a dark room, turn the light on, dark leaves. It would save a lot of headaches and suffering later on in the marriage. If this one principle were followed, this right here, 2 Corinthians 6.14, should be the milestone to everyone's relationship. Today's man, another principle that would protect the longevity of your marriage is that we as men should obey God, love, honor, and protect our wives as we would our own bodies, as stated in Ephesians 5, 25 through 21. The writer says, for husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave his life for her. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. Now, as the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. The corresponding principle is that the wife should obey God and submit to her own husband as to the Lord. As stated just a couple of verses before what we just read in Ephesians 25 and Ephesians 5.22, the marriage between a man and a woman. L let me say that again. The marriage between a man and a woman is a picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. Christ gave himself for the church. He loves, honors, and protects her as his bride. If you look at Revelations 19, 
7 through 9, let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. We are the bride. We're the church. We're adorning ourselves for the return of Christ. Are you adorning yourself? Are you getting ready? Are you making ready? Are you preparing yourself for Christ's return? Just like in a natural wedding. Let me give you a few practical ways of building on the foundation of a godly marriage. This is something that I had to learn the hard way over my life. And I found that many couples have found this helpful in making their marriage last. You ready? Write this down. You might do yourself some good remembering this. The first one is spending quality time together. How much quality time do you spend with your wife, men? Quality time. I'm not talking about sitting and watching TV together. I'm talking about turning the TV off and talking, having a conversation. That's spending quality time. Going on a walk, hand in hand, through the park, at the beach. Just the two of you talking, having a conversation about life and each other. How about saying I love you often? How often do you say I love you? And mean it. Being kind. Are you nice to your wife? Or are you critical in everything that she does? Showing affection. Do you Are you an affectionate brother? Are you an affectionate man to your wife? They are emotional beings. They need physical touch. Not only the physical touch, but they need mental stimulation. They need you to show affection to them. There's times that I walk through the house and I'll brush up against my wife. She likes that. I'll touch her. I'll caress her. I'll kiss on her. Showing her my love and affection for her. How about offering compliments? Do you compliment your wife? When was the last time you said something nice and kind about your wife? You complimented her hair. Do you even notice she changed her hair color or changed her hairstyle? Have you even noticed she bought a new outfit? Except for when you start screaming and hollering that you spent too much money. Pay a compliment to her from time to time. Okay, how about going on dates? Do you still date your wife? Do you have a date night? Pick a week night. And take her out. You don't have to spend thousands or hundreds of dollars to take her out on a night. Take her to get her a coffee or sandwich or something, a snack. Just a time away if you have children. Find a babysitter. Get out. Do something together. Go see a movie. Read a, go to the library together. Just go on date night. We try to find date nights. In our busy schedule, just a time to get away from the house and the kids. Here's a good one. Writing notes. Do you write notes to your wife? There's there's times that I and see these things that I have put into practice myself. So I'm not telling you to do things that I don't do. I do these. I write notes and stick them into her purse or book or wherever I know she's going to be. If she's driving to a meeting and going to work or something, I'll stick a note and sticky note in her purse or in her iPad somewhere, or I'll put a card in the visor because I know if it's sunny out, she's going to put the visor down and the card's going to drop out. Drop some notes in her drawer where her panties are, (laughs) her bras, wherever. Stick a note in there and say, I love you. Something. Write some notes and stick it on the bathroom the night before or You know, get a grease pen, something that you know you have to clean, but get a grease pen and write I love you in a big heart on the mirror the night before when she's sleeping. When she wakes up, if she's in there before you, she'll see it. Man, that does wonders. It does a lot. Giving gifts. That's another one. Do you give gifts to your wife? It don't have to be expensive, but it's from the heart. Now, if you have that wife that will look at you and go, cheapy, well, you might have an issue. You might have to come up a little bit, but just getting gifts, you know, flowers. Does she like flowers, candies or whatever it is? You know, find out. If, are you listening to her conversation? I listen to my wife when she talks and when she says, oh, I like that or I'd like to get that or I'm on it. And the next thing you know, it's arriving and she has it and she's just tickled because she knows that I listen to her when she talks. Being ready to forgive. 
Are you willing to forgive? There's times that she will hurt you. Oh, yes, I know this very well. There's times that I'm hurt. But you know what? We come back together and get it right. It's a time of forgiving. That's important. Learn what your love languages are. And those of your wife, do you even know what your love language is? There's several. There's five love languages that are in particular that we mostly doing, you know, and you need to understand what your five love languages are. For me to help you with that, I suggest that you look up the five love languages by Gary Chapman. Go on Amazon, pick that up. That ought to be in your library and you ought to study that. Find out what your love languages are and what your wife's love languages are. Here, let me tell you what they are. There's words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. Those are the five love languages. And in these actions are encompassed by the biblical or Bible's instruction to husbands and wives. You know, know that my wife, she loves words of affirmation. And that's one of the five love languages is words of affirmation. So I try to give her what she needs. I try to fill up her love tank and give her words of affirmation that she looks good. You smell good. Man, that dress is fine on you. It's like, mm, you know, just say something that she appreciates in the very first marriage, when we look at the very first marriage of time, when God brought Eve to Adam, she was built from his flesh and bone. And you find that over in Genesis 2.21. And they became what? One flesh. Genesis 2.23 through 24. In another show that I do with my wife, Christine, the Malachi and Christine show. This is what we have been talking about from uh, time to time since we've started the show is becoming one and how becoming one means more than just a physical union. It means a meeting of the minds and the soul to form one unit. This relationship goes far beyond sensual and emotional attractions and into the realm of spiritual oneness. That's very important in your relationship is to have a spiritual oneness, a oneness that can only be found as both partners surrender to God and to each other. You have to surrender to God and you have to surrender to one another. This relationship is not centered on my and me, but it's centered on our and us. This is a vital key in the secrets to a long lasting marriage, because now it's not about you. It's about her. It's about us. It's about we, not about me, my, and I. Those should not be an equation in your conversation. Listen to me closely, men. If there is anything that I have learned in my life about making a marriage last for a long time, it is something that both partners have to make a priority. You will find that couples whose marriages last celebrate their commitment to each other. My parents have been celebrating 62 years of marriage. That's longevity. And you ask them, what's the secret? What's the formula? They have different secrets, different formulas, but it all works for them. It might not work for you, but it worked for them. Was it easy? No, it wasn't easy. They didn't know how to be married. Who knows how to be married? Is there a course on marriage on how to be a perfect husband and perfect wife? No. So stop wasting your money. This is something that you learn over time through experience, through trial and error, even in anger. Many couples make it a point to not even speak of divorce. Something that I can't testify of because I've had divorces in my life solidifying one's vertical relationship with God goes a long way toward ensuring the horizontal relationship between a husband and a wife is a relationship that is lasting and one that God honors. That's very important in your relationship. Let me wrap this podcast up with this. When you and your wife desire a marriage to last, you both must learn how to deal with problems. Yes, there are going to be problems. Yes, you have had problems. Yes, you might be having problems, but you both must learn how to deal with them. And the best ways to do this is through prayer. Yes, men, learn how to pray. Learn how to pray more. 
Learn to pray by yourself. Learn to pray with her. Just pray. That's a very important role in your life as a man is to pray. I pray for my wife. She prays for me. We pray for each other. We know that it's important for our marriage to have prayer in our lives. Bible study. Have time of devotion with your wife. Read a scripture. Talk about it. What does it mean to you? And mutual encouragement. That's important in your relationship is to have mutual encouragement. Encourage one another. When she's down, encourage her. And hopefully when you're down, she encourages you. Can't be a one-way street. You can't be the cheerleader and she doesn't help in the cheering. Somebody's going to need cheering. Somebody's going to need cheering up. Somebody is going to need some rest emotionally. And the other person, the other spouse is going to have to come in and help you. And You help her. That's what it's all about. That's what makes a lasting marriage. There are so many other things that I can talk about, but I don't want to go into a long podcast. That would be a total one hour show. My podcasts are geared for 20 to 30 minutes, giving you what's important for you to learn to be today's man according to God's foundation. Let me add this. There is nothing wrong with seeking outside help when you're having problems in your relationship. In fact, one of the purposes of the church, as written in Hebrews 10 24, is to Spur one another on toward love and good deeds. If you're struggling, if you're having problems, if you're having issues, if you're having fights and arguments, seek advice from an older Christian couple or a pastor or a biblical marriage counselor. As long as there is a biblical foundation from those that you are seeking help from, the church I feel has a problem when they seek out unsaved counselors. Yes, those counselors are good in their own lane, but you need to seek out someone that speaks your language, that understands the biblical principles of going to God when there's issues in the marriage, going to God when there's issues in your relationship. They know how to pray. They'll pray with you. They'll pray for you. That's why the Bible says, again, you can now you can add this scripture to this. Be not unequally yoked. OK, in a relationship, don't be unequally yoked when you go to professionals dealing with your relationship. Today's man, if you want your marriage and relationship to last, learn all you can about how to love your wife in the ways that only God can teach you. And that's how you will learn the keys to a long lasting marriage this concludes our show for today through one show at a time we are helping those in distress and keeping oneself from being polluted by the world to live hope and to change love God love yourself and love others thank you for subscribing and sharing our podcast with others we look forward to being with you on our next show I'm Pastor Malachi and this has been today's man